everyone. Uh, so this project started out at Last Academy. Uh, so me and Harold sat down and tried to figure out what we're going to do over the next year in terms of continuous integration and integrating master, the Git master branches of KDE Frameworks and Plasma 5. And this is where we are after a year, and we will present the work. I hope you guys like it. Next. Oh, you need to do, someone needs to do the keyboard handling, man. Well, I just did. Oh, you did? Oh, all right. So, cool. A uh, couple of years ago, when I started with KDSC packaging, and I got involved in KDS packaging, uh, it was more or less 60 sources, 70 sources. And the way KDE releases used to work was you, the packages would get the source towels a week before the release to prepare all the binary packages. And being the optimistic person that I am, I just thought, hey, that's good enough time to get the binary packages up and test it well enough. Turns out, not so much. It took about four days to actually get through all of the packaging, which left about two days for testing. And we couldn't do enough QA to catch all of the problems at times. And this got me thinking about two points. First of all, that is that there is a lot of work to be done in terms of KDSE packaging, that there are massive source, source towels that are released, and that it doesn't scale. It wastes time and lots of energy. And this was when we had five or six people working on KDSE releases in Kubuntu. Uh, the second thing I realized was there was a lot of improvement to be made in terms of automation. So it was mostly uh, serialized work that could be automated away so that all of us could go to a beach and enjoy a mojito. Uh, so things kind of had to change, right? So Felix, Greer, and Philip came up with these scripts called Kubuntu Automation Tools that popped up on Launchpad. Uh, which massively parallelized all our work. And what these scripts used to do was were prepare the source packages, upload them to the Launchpad, let them build, and then the human would actually look at the failures and go, and go through them, fix them. This helped a little bit, but still, uh, there was still a lot of work to be done in terms of, uh, in terms of the idea that you could just go to the beach and have a mojito, and just press a button, have a release, and go to the beach, and have a mojito, really. So that's, that's uh, the process had really had to change, and that's where uh, our CI tooling comes in. Uh, next. So enter Pangaea. Uh, Pangaea is about 14,000 lines of Ruby code, and it has 44 unit tests. It is spread across 13 servers, uh, which, which is basically three Jenkins servers. Uh, nine slaves, and one mobile imaging server for the plasma phone stuff that you saw yesterday. Woohoo. Uh, right, uh, so the way it works it is that we distribute packages for Debian and Kubuntu. And for Debian, since Debian does not have a PPA-like structure, we use Amazon S3, S3 to actually distribute the packages themselves. Uh, so how it works. Uh, we have merger jobs in, can you open? KCI, perhaps? Uh, if I figure out. Sorry? Yeah. Wait. That one. Right. But which one is it? And KCI, one? yeah. It's this one. Yes. So we have merger jobs, which basically what they do is uh, take the. We, we have a Git back. We have the packaging stored on git.debian.org. So, and we have multiple branches over there. So we have one, branches like Kubuntu One Stable, which track. Git master from KDE frameworks and Plasma. And we have Kubuntu Vivid Archive and Kubuntu Wiley Archive. And all of these changes need to be merged properly. And we have merger jobs like merger analyt <coughs> analytics. Uh, and what these jobs do is merge the appropriate branches uh, amongst each other. So things like things that go into the archive go into the Kubuntu Wiley branch on git.debian, and they get merged into Kubuntu Unstable automatically by these jobs. Uh, we have the builder jobs, which prepare the source packages. Uh, and by preparing source packages, I mean they grab the git master or whatever branch you want of KDE frameworks and merge the packaging in and prepare the initial source packages. No binaries are produced at this time. It's just purely the source packaging. Uh, then depending on which CI you are looking at, we have the binary jobs. 
uh, for Kubuntu CI, we upload them to Launchpad to build them. For the Debian CI, we have uh, slaves that actually build out the binaries. Uh, then we have publishing jobs, which publish them to Amazon S3, or in the case of the Kubuntu CI, there are QA jobs, which, make sure, which run through some tests to make sure the packages are actually semi-usable at the very least. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? No, no, well, uh, ah, wait, no, that was fine. Right, so... <laughs> right, so what... So I'm going to talk about DCI a little bit now. Uh, so DCI currently targets Debian Unstable. It does not target anything else. Uh, it builds for two architectures, AMD64 and ARM HF. Uh, it has a PPA-like CI setup. Uh, can you? What do you want? DCI. Tell me what you want. DCI. DCI. That's this one. Right. So it has a PPA-like structure setup. Uh, so each of these uh, folders, so to speak, has a separate repository mapped to it. Uh, for example, you can only use the Qt5. So we currently build Qt5 from Git as well, so we build the 5.4 branch. Uh, so for example, if you just want to use five, the 5.4 branch uh, from Qt, you can just add the Qt repository. You don't need to add any of the other ones. If you want to use the frameworks repository, you can use the, you have to use the frameworks uh, repository and the Qt5 repository, so on and so forth. So each of these is actually a separate repository on Amazon S3. Uh, what else? Uh, right, can you go to the next slide? I can't find my mouse. Hello. Right, so the architecture, as I explained before, for DCI was source, binary, publish. Uh, for, for the binary stage and the source stage, we currently use uh, SCH routes to build out packages. Uh, the plan is to you know, synergize with KCI and have Docker build out packages primarily because Docker has an API instead of me calling commands via Ruby to a shoot, and APIs are just a nicer way to interact with the system. Uh, let's see. Right, so some statistics. Uh, we have 780 Jenkins jobs on DCI, uh, out of which 257 are sources, so those are like source packages that DCI builds out. And that's about, that's about all for me. You can take over now. No, I don't want to. Ah. <laughs> well, you have to, unfortunately. Terrible. Okay, can you hear me? Okay. Um, so, Rowan talked about the Debian CI part of things, and I'm going to talk about the Kubuntu stuff. So. Um, we have Kubuntu CI. Uh, the Kubuntu CI was the first CI that we built, uh, therefore its architecture is very wicked and mighty and complicated and well. Um, but it shouldn't be a surprise that since it was the first thing that we built, it runs most of the core services. As we have seen, the mergers are run on the Kubuntu CI. Um, all the QA is run on the Kubuntu CI and a lot of additional management stuff that is happening in the background in order to facilitate um, CI work is also happening there. Um, so in a way, it is the heart of the operation. And right now, it is using Launchpad, as Rowan has mentioned. Um, it is using, using Launchpad for builds, and it is using it excessively. So Launchpad has like 50 build servers, I believe. And at peak hours, we would allocate 30, we would try to get 36 of those just for Kubuntu CI. Um, it is a massive thing. Um, in fact, it is so massive. Um, we have 600 distinct build jobs for 200 sources. All of these are in uh, KDE, of course. Um, these 600 jobs would be separated in, uh, as Rowan also has mentioned, um, two versions of Kubuntu. We always integrate against the latest stable version, um, which in currently would be 15.04, and the upcoming version, which currently is 15.10. <coughs> Additionally, we integrate both Git master and, if applicable, um, a stable repository. So for KD applications, we right now uh, would implement master and applications 1508, which is going to be the next stable thing. Um, right. 
next one is the mobile Kubuntu CI. Now, as you have heard yesterday, um, Blue Systems has been working on making a phone kind of software thingy, and obviously, since CI systems are very obvious, uh, are very, very advantageous and very awesome, um, as you should have heard in, in Alex Fiesta's talk yesterday, feedback is very important. In fact, feedback is so important that I think we could not have pulled off um, the plasma phone stuff had we not had this particular CI. Um, now, this particular CI had a bit of a um, rushed development in a way. Uh, originally, we wanted to use the regular Kubuntu CI, um, since Launchpad also can do ARM builds, except they didn't work. So, um, what we did is what we always do when we run into a problem we sit down and just run our head, heads against the wall and come up with a new solution. Um, so, yeah, whiteboards were touched inappropriately, arguments. Uh, we had flowcharts were drawn, and at the end of the day, we had uh, a completely new delivery pipeline that is sort of based on what, on what Debian CI does. So you create um, a source package, and then you build it on multiple architectures, and once the multiple architectures are done, additional QA jobs would run. Um, I will talk more about the QA later, um, but basically you would have different QA depending on the architecture relevance thereof. So on a phone, you might want to do different QA than on a desktop. Um, so this CI is very much the future. I'm not going to show you these Jenkinses because I think it's not very interesting to look at. It's just a bunch of mostly red things. We're going to build and show whole cost of builds. What's that? <laughs> oh no, we no. I think we don't have a simple enough build to finish in time. Uh, unfortunately. So um, what we're doing is with the mobile CI we have all in all eight build hosts. Um, four of those built for 64 bits and four of those built for ARM. And the ARM ones are ridiculously slow because they are ARM, so that's why it takes so long. Um, the 64-bit ones usually finish in two minutes for most frameworks, um, just raw build time. And the ARM ones usually take like 20 minutes to half an hour. Quinn, I, I believe, takes one hour. It's one of the biggest things along with KIO and Plasma framework, I believe. Um, but yes, so um, if you are interested in this stuff, then go take a look at all the CIs on pengear.pub. It's our domain where we host all this stuff. Um, and if you have questions, you can ask us about it. Um, the architecture, so we put a lot of thought into how the architecture of the jobs aligns and how it all comes together into um, actual packages. So how is this all relevant to us as KDE, and also how is it relevant to a distribution to have a CI? Um, after all, the topic of this talk is continuous package delivery. Um, this is also something that Alex Fiestas talked about yesterday, so if you have not seen his talk, I would encourage you to um, watch the video recording of it uh, later on when you return. Um, so there's CI, which is continuous integration, what you're doing is essentially you take a piece of software, you build it, and you might perform a, a series of tests on it to see, is it good enough, right? Um, but then it, that in of itself is just a very automated thing. You have done automated tests. Um, there's, of course, also manual testing. In order to do manual testing, you need continuous delivery. Um, in various ways. Um, so there's two ways to con do continuous delivery. There is the sort of testing delivery and then there's the release de delivery. Ideally, they would be the same thing. Um, and that is where we are ultimately want to be. Um, right now we aren't there, but there are plans, discussions, stuff is happening. Um, so how is it relevant right now? So we're doing continuous delivery. We're also doing CI for, for the packaging um, aspect there. Um, the obvious thing, or perhaps not so obvious thing, is um, we have built uh, .kde, which is our general KDE CI, and it is integrating in a very liberal environment, right? We want to have our build succeed and not fail for weird reasons like missing dependencies of some obscure library, and then we have to bug the sysadmins to install the piece of software and whatnot. Um, so it is a generally very liberal environment, whereas um, distribution package building happens in very strict environments. Um, most distributions in their packaging would have a very concise list of which dependencies are needed in order to build this package. So there's a distribution level integration aspect to this. Um, 
integrating things on a distribution in a packaging sort of environment adds additional value as you have tighter checks on things. So you would detect things like uh, if you um, it, uh, use a new header and you're not looking for whatever thing provides that header. Um, most of the time, one of our CIs is going to trip over it because the dependency for that header has not explicitly been declared. Right? So that is one advantage, um, arguably not the biggest one, but it is an advantage nonetheless. I think Martin um, highlighted this uh, a couple of weeks ago, um, that Quinn in particular is currently having a lot of development with regards to Wayland, and sometimes dependencies get forgotten to be looked for in CMake. And distribution integration then highlights this and can, can uh, um, enable much, much faster, uh, faster integration uh, and iteration on this issue, right? Um, the bigger, and in my opinion, biggest uh, advantage right now is that Debian and to uh, that extent Kubuntu is doing ABI checks on the libraries, um, unlike build.kde, unfortunately. So what that means is when any one of you breaks a library, uh, breaks the binary interface of a library, I will know. I will know because my CI turns red and I get screamed at by my own tooling because the uh, library is not broken. And then you will get an angry mail from me saying that your library is broken and I will tell you the commit that broke it and I will tell you to fix it. And so far I think there have been three instances where we actually were able to uh, prevent binary incompatibility between frameworks releases thanks to that stuff. So ideally I want to have this go into build.kde because it's really awesome and it's pretty much quintessential in particular with this month, monthly releases that we do with frameworks that we have, um, that we have tight control and tight verification of our ABI. Right? It's one of the, uh, the, uh, the key offerings of the framework is that we do not break compatibility. <laughs> so that is very important and it's very awesome and uh, I hope to talk with Scar uh, to Scarlett about this uh, in above. Um, another thing, and that's again, it's good to have, but it's not quintessential, um, is the verification of installation paths. So for those of you who don't know how complicated packaging works, um, you would have a number of packages generated by one source. Um, the way we know which files go into which packages, we would have a list of all the files that come out at compile time and allocated to one package or another. If this list of files is strict enough, then our integration will fail if you change a file path. There's two reasons why we want to have that happen. First of all, we want to know when you move a file from one repository to another. Um, the other and perhaps more valuable thing is we know when you accidentally break something. There has been a case with Blue's Cute, I believe, uh, recently where um, the installation destination was changed and uh, some DBus file, I believe, was installed into an incorrect path. And I was say I turned red because now the file is not here anymore. Blah, blah, blah. So I looked at it and yeah, the, the, the destination was incorrect and that got resolved pretty quickly. Um, any questions to the KDE advan advantages that KDE is getting from this? Okay. Then um, there's a QA advantage for the distribution and there's a development advantage for the distribution. Um, so the problem with packaging is it's if, if, you, if it's like with KDE and we have 50 frameworks, each of these frameworks would have minimal changes that would have to be done to them, right? Um, you would have to do that every month, so you would have to spend at least a day every month doing these changes. I don't know about you, but I don't really fancy spending a day doing weird packaging stuff, it's boring, tedious, and rah. So, um, continuous integration of the stuff against our packaging enables us to do atomic changes, right? Something would change in a KDE repository, the packaging gets adjusted the next day, everything's green again, hooray. Um, and in addition to that, we can of course do automated QA, in fact, excessive amount of automated QA. Um, if you introduce a new CMake dependency, we will know about it, because I have written a nice tool that complains if there's a missing CMake dependency, um, if it's optional, of course, if it's required, it would fail anyway. Um, I also have a tooling that would check uh, if all QML runtime dependencies are available. Um, there's also tooling um, that checks that all the files are actually installed into a package, right? As I was explaining, we have these lists of files to explain where, where installed files should go in the packaging. Um, 
we have checks for that. And uh, perhaps the most important one for us is actually the check that everything installs and everything can be upgraded and everything can be removed again. Um, this is a test that takes about one hour to complete. Um, and it's literally installing, I think, 600 packages and it's upgrading 600 packages and then removing them again. And um, yeah, so that's cool stuff. I'm done. Questions? So um, you, you do a lot of testing of the builds, uh, checking that the packages contain what you expect or what, what should be there. To what degree are you testing? Or do you have tests to also check the functionality of the software you have packaged, like actually running the application and check that it behaves well? Uh, we currently don't. I have been wanting to do it for the last six months, but I haven't found the time for it. Um, there's some provisioning for that, so we can in theory do it. Um, so all the bills are all uh, separated in, in Docker containers, so we can easily uh, try to run an application. Right? It's just a matter of uh, sort of setting up the environment, right? uh, getting a minimal KDE session, as it were, to, to run and then have the application start and see does it exit with zero, for example. Um, so it's on, the, it's on the list, but it's not currently done. Okay. Related to that, uh, Tiki, let me look at uh, OpenQA. Alice just mentioned that to me, uh, so I need to go and talk to the OpenSUSE guys and see what's going on over there. Um, and Susan General is using and it does basically automated acceptance testing of the full installations, all the graphical things and so on. So this is pretty powerful. And I think uh, Fedora also is starting to use it and uh, maybe that's also something which could be very useful for you. Yeah. yeah. So, so one thing that we definitely want to do long term is uh, do testing of applications. So, what what I actually want to happen is to have someone figure out how to do um, application testing through the accessibility layers that we already have, and then uh, edit actual um, functional testing to the software. Right. So we could have a QML applet would be tested automatically. And yeah. So definitely something to look at. sort of problems, they shouldn't, they are blockers, but I don't think we should just give up because of them, no. because no. testing is just so important. As, again, Alex was saying yesterday, feedback is incredibly important, right? shared, to be honest. Um, so, so distribution packaging would always implement their own build uh, directive, sort of, right? So they would call CMake somehow and they would call make install somehow. Um, so there isn't much to be shared there. Uh, 
other than that, QA-wise, I would like not to have a lot of overlap between uh, a distribution CI and the KDE CI. Ideally, a lot of the things that we are currently doing on the Kubuntu CI, for example, should really be done on build.kde. Um, so there isn't much that can be shared in my opinion. Um, but uh, there's a continuous integration of some time, uh, and we will definitely talk about it. And uh, you're talking about uh, some uh, extensions to check the EI and stuff like that. Yeah. Are, uh, is there any plan to make this uh, easily available to other, other champions and sensors or uh, other users who want to use them? Or is it um, it's already available, so there's, uh, I think it's maintained by the Linux Foundation, it's called uh, ABI Compliance Checker, um, ACC for short, um, and it does exactly that. Um, currently we are not actually using that, we're using a Debian specific solution that literally does dump all, this, uh, all the signatures of all the functions in the library into a file and then compare them to the new version. No, we don't. What do you mean by that? Uh, the reproducible build project by Debian to uh, ensure that um, the package you compile is actually can be reproduced in the same way so that you get the same binary that you compile it again to the same two chain and stuff like that. Can be done. I am not sure there's much point in it. Well, there is because we know then that nobody can reproduce. Yes, I, I don't see how that could happen, but <laughs> should, should someone prevent re, uh, present a reasonable argument for why we would want to have that done on the CI system, then no, no, it can, can be done. So the thing is, um, the packaging of the CI system is always ahead of what would be in the distribution, right? Um, that's sort of the idea that you continuously integrate um, the packaging against what is in KD upstream. Uh, so the packaging would always be different and ahead of um, uh, what is in the distribution, actually. We have three more minutes for questions, then we can take follow. Uh, what is the status of uh, other, other platforms like Windows, Mac OS and the mobile platforms that are coming? Is there some reforcing? That, that mostly goes into the area of build.kde, I believe. Um, so what we're doing is exclusive to Linux packaging in a way. Um, technically you could do the stuff we're doing, you could technically do with any uh, operating system and any Linux distribution. Um, it's just Windows builds, for example, since KDE is essentially the, the distributor for Windows, um, it would make sense to have this done on, on build.kde. Um, yeah. same, same for mobile, for that matter. Um, and, and actual mobile stuff is a bit tricky anyway. Can I see one more question? Oh, Matthias. Matthias. <laughs> Oh yes. yes. And we have two parts to check for installation and integration, and we have a deepwood to check for uploading and then files and stuff like that. Uh, do you integrate those? Or, uh, uh, we're, current, we're currently integrating Linton. Uh, we're not integrating the other ones for various reasons. Um, but yes, so Linton actually is also, also adding uh, value to um, KDE software. Um, it's essentially a static analyzer of what the package is, and it also catches a lot of the issues that you would have um, in upstream software, like your desktop file is incorrect or some stuff like that. So, yeah. It has, uh, so we have our own tooling for that, which has mostly traditional reasons because of how launchpad PPAs work. Ideally, this would go away. Um, so yes, uh, we are aware of it and we're looking into it. Okay.
we are out of time, so thank you.